If it's difficult, you can change it when you While all these things are being done, let me see what I think about flyers. Let me see. <coughs> flyers, flyers, flyers from coal power station. People call it a waste material. I don't like that notion. Flyers, a valuable source of ceramics, fine and coarse. It is normally in micron size or in nanometers, a mill down price. So, keep it that way. So, sing with me. Flyers, flyers, flyers from coal power station. People call it a waste material. I don't like that notion. And now we don't like that notion. All right? You can see the name. The first thing on the first slide, as the top name is organized by Professor Kamal Kekar. Okay, and that's the way I look at my life and world. People who have done the right thing always give them the first respect, okay? And that is what I do. This Center Material Science was started by Professor E.C. Subbarao and I did my MTEC. I was the first MTEC batch in Material Science and that is that one. And before I came here about three weeks ago, I sent him an email saying, sir, after many years I'm coming here and Professor Kamal God has organized this GYAN program. So that's my respect to him and my respect to all of you, okay? So the lecture one, and a few of the initial lectures, these are from a book chapter, which is chapter one in a NOVA science publisher by one of my students, Sagar T. Cholake, he's from Maharashtra. And when I was in atomic energy, so I saw Maharashtra for one year. And one thing I used to see whenever I cross the road, he said, Kamba. Kamba means stop. So I'm a thing, I, I never forget that word, Kamba. And then when we go to a hotel, he says, Kana Chalu Ahe. So again, that was it. So wherever I've been, I always like to learn the language of that state because I want to be a part of that state. When I was in Kerala, Isro, 
then on the bus there was no there was no English writing so everything was written in Malayalam so other people used to say oh and I said no just, this is a Kerala state and Malayalam so let's and I took my time to learn writing and reading Malayalam and then one day I told in my office it's wrong now I can read and write my book. Then one staff said, I'll challenge you if you can write my name. He has a very complicated name. Then I said, if I do what will you do? He said, I'll pay for your cup of tea today. But if you cannot do that, you have to pay for my cup of tea. I'm a dig there. Then I said, I'll say, I'll cup of tea. I'll cup of tea. But that's the way I look at it when I come to India. India is India. Whether I go north, west, east, does not matter. I am Indian. And I love all Indian languages, all Indian people, and all Indian culture. India is great. That's why India is, compared to many other countries, it's a much smaller country, but compared to the technology and knowledge that one India is respected throughout the world, compared to any other country. But we have to remember, we are all Indians. I come from Bengal, that's a different thing. When I go to Orissa, I try to speak Orissa. But that's what India is. So when I see you, it's all Indian. Okay? And that's my request to all of you. Please think that way. Okay. Sagar Tichalake, he went there as a master student, master coursework. And then they were given in my department. And there, these master MSc tech students were asked to do some courses which are undergraduate courses. So, being a person from Shivaji's state, like Maharashtra, he complained. He went to, we have paid for all master courses, but why should we attend even a single course where there is part of undergraduate course? Then they accepted. He said, they said, look, people come from so many backgrounds and some of the courses they do not know, that's why part of the undergraduate courses help them. He said, no, I'm from India, I'm not doing any such thing. So they called me, Bando, what shall I do with him? I said, just leave, it, leave, it, leave him with me. So I trained him in fly ash and I asked him to write a book chapter because I was invited by Nova Science Publisher. And there was a, he did a wonderful thing, 50, 57 pages chapter one in that book. book. So, and then he completed his master's, he did his PhD with me, and that his PhD work it was so good. 2016, I was invited by US Defense Innovations in America, and they gave me not only the presentation, a big table for three hours, so that people can come and see. So that's how I look after my students, and then when they become doctorate, I always say Dr. Saga like I never say Saga, okay? But this is the work. This is the, a few pages, first three, four slides. This is taken from that book, because that book, that book chapter is there, okay? And when you go to the next slide, okay, this is that book chapter, source Nova book chapter one by Cholake and Bandhubhadda. And this information is with Professor Kamal Kekar. So if you want to find out what is the book, it is given there. Now, that's why I put the, that's why I put the uh, PDF file there, because sometimes, yes? Just for a moment, please start the computer, so you will be able to do your Yes, that's one, one thing very good. Computers always are ahead of me. But I don't tell the computers I don't care. If I cannot follow you, I do it my own way. Computers. Anyway, while this is being done, so fly ash, as you will see, it starts from coal power stations and not only that, even early days when 
there was no gas in the cooking, uh, home cooking, it used to burn coal and you could say rock or ash, chai. So that's how fly ash, okay? But that's a small quantity. But if you, when you get burn coal to get all energy, then there's a huge amount of fly ash. And it's a wonderful thing to recognize that fly ash is actually a series of oxides. And what is the advantage of oxides over non-oxides? What property is very high? But what is the property it has? What, what property? Okay, I'll say one thing. Density, melting temperature, and stress strain, which is the most important for ceramics? Melting temperature, thank you. And because melting temperature is very high, that makes it much more stable. But the some disadvantage of the ceramics are that they are very brittle. But you can make even brittle ceramics ductile by putting two or three ceramics. Or otherwise, if you have the fly ash, which is a series of ceramics, if you put it in all different areas, then you can make those things much easier and also much cheaper. Because in all countries, fly ash is very considered as very cheap material. But India is different. A few years ago in Kolkata, there was a pollution control board, they organized the fly ash. They organized the fly ash conference where my university and for I was the advisor. And then we had Dr. Bimal Kumar. He was formerly with DST India. Now he has found his own company, C Farm, which is actually C and I think FARM. So, and there he said that India, in India, fly ash has become not a free quantity, but a commercial quantity. So people have to buy fly ash. So if you are in the part of coal energy, you can always get some money by selling your fly ash. Okay? So that was the first thing. Again, I was very happy that it is India who took that initiating role. And he couldn't come today, Dr. Bimal Kumar, because he had some meeting, but then he asked me to give, give him the uh, website for this GAN program so that he will keep in touch. And, and I'm sure he will keep in touch with Professor Kamal Khar and IITK. When I came to my hotel, on the my wife is my wife came with me, so it's good to have a boss with you, okay, all the time. And the computer I was working. And then the computer said, look, you are using me for some time. I'll go and rest for some time. I said, all right, you take rest. I'll go and give my lectures and come back. All right. So fly ash, coal fly ash, a valuable recycling treasure in construction and environmental application. What is construction? Can you tell me? In this room, when you talk about construction, what is the construction part? Which part of this room is construction part? Is it the chair or the table or the walls or the roofs? Which walls, roofs? What are the things that the walls have? Brick, brick, cement, con concrete. Okay. So, and that is a huge. Has it started? It can it go now? Thank you. This is a huge range of applications. So, it's a good. Good thing that is, you, you answer that because if fly ash can be used in this structural application, construction application, is the largest amount of is the largest amount of like utilization of materials. Okay, and it is excellent. How can I go back to my number one? Okay, and then if I press. Okay, thank you. Do you want to do it, or I can do it? Okay, okay, all right. Let's go to the next one. As I said, this is the cover of the book, and I have sent this book book cover to Professor uh, Kamal and Kamal Kekar, and it has this ISBN, and it is a publisher. But it was good that. NOVA is a very 
respective publisher and they when they invited and I did not expect our chapter to be put at number one. Number one gives a good thing that the other other chapters also they follow from there. All right, so it's about 57 pages. And this is my this was Dr. Sagati Cholake, my master's and PhD scholar. He is now, and this is me. Sri, my name is Srikanta Bandhavada. So people call me Srikant. If I'm in North India, and if I, when I'm in Australia, they call me Sri, and sometimes they call me Bandy or Bando. And if you ever happen to go onto this uh, YouTube, you'll find Bandy, the singing professor, you'll find lots of my songs and things like that, because I'm also, being an Indian, you have to be, you have to love music having been in all parts of India, North, East, South, West, okay? So, Bandy, B-A-N-D-Y. So, you can call me either Bando, some people call me Bandy, or Sri or Srikant, or Srikanto. I, I, I'm happy that way. But I use my name all the time, so that people from all over the world, when I go there, they know that I'm originally from India, all right? I love India. And University of New South Wales, it's a very good university. It's in Sydney. And New South Wales is the, state, is the name of the state. And Sydney, University of New South Wales. And I'm in the School of Material Science and Engineering. And it is in Faculty of Science, but there is often Faculty of Engineering says Material Science and Engineering should be in us. So I don't worry about that. So whatever it is, so I have worked with people from all parts of University of Faculty of Science and Engineering. Because that's what material science is. All right? Because if you work with a civil engineer, they know everything about construction and everything. But if I ask them, what is the construction material in civil engineering? They say steel. I said, what are the, the microstructure or the phases of steel? They said, Bando, don't bother me. We don't know about that. I said, you better go and do some material science course and look under the structure of ferrite, cementite, martensite under the microscope, then your brain will open up. So why it is brittle, why it is, it can be very ductile, then martensite, then cooling temperature, fast cooling. So that is what is, because I was a student in metallurgy, metallurgy in IIT, Kharagpur, and it was excellent, all these labs and the things I'll never forget, okay. So, so then I did my PhD in Masters in Composites, I did PhD in totally different area, fracture mechanics of polymers under environmental, environmental stress. So at Monash University. So I thought, oh my God. And I didn't give up. It took me a couple of years. But even those days, there was no email. I had seven international reference journal papers from my PhD. So that's the way things go. Never give up. OK? Always go ahead. The next page when you go there, okay, I'll just stand here so that I can also have a read at it. Every year, coal electricity generation throughout the world is rapidly increasing and consequently production of fly ash as a byproduct is going up and up. So, there are coal products everywhere and in different states of India there is huge amount of coal products. About a month ago in uh, Consulate General of India they sent me an invitation saying that the chief minister of the state of Chhattisgarh he was visiting so I was asked to attend the meeting and I went there and then they said that they have the highest amount of uh, electric, about 25 percent of all this coal, electricity power from coal in Chhattisgarh. That's very impressive. And then I mentioned about this conference, and they said when you come here, they might be in contact with IIT Kanpur also. All right, but more and more, more and more coal power stations are there everywhere. All right, but 
disposal of the fly ash has been primitively by dumping, it has a landfill and this causes lots of problems related to health and agriculture. And this part discusses the amount of fly ash produced over recent years, its properties, problems and attempted research and the research undertaken in recycling fly ash in fields such as construction and agriculture. So, this part and then later in future or maybe day after tomorrow, so we will go to polymers and plastics. But in the, this today, we will look at the what are the aspects of fly ash. So, may I ask what are your backgrounds? What, what, what is your background? In which degree you have, you have done? Yes? What degree you have done undergraduate? Second year, okay. Good. Electrical engineering, civil engineering. Why I am saying is that, I will show you in some of the slides there that, that fly ash can be use a little bit of fly ash, it can actually increase the electrical conductivity of plastics like anything. Civil engineering, because fly ash is used in heavy in civil engineering. And I also did a lot of work with civil engineering. So pursuing electrical engineering in the university of Nation. What is your name? Panda? Yes, uh, yes Panda. Yes, Dr. Panda. The Panda sir is here. Oh, sorry. Namaskar. And you are Shukka. Okay, yes. I remember them because they contacted me for the registration. And what is your what is your background? First degree. First degree? Okay. All right. Okay. First degree? Physics. BS in physics. Okay. Okay. Yes, and first degree because first degree is what I physics. Okay, thank you. Very good because that's what that's what I like about it. I work with people from all all branches. Okay, and one thing what I do, even if they make small contribution, I never go to the acknowledgement and saying we thank such and such. No, I I said look, if you are working with me, you have to give your permission that when we publish. You have to be a co-author in the papers. Okay, that's why I feel I feel so happy that if we all share the part of the thing. All right. And first degree, okay. materials chemistry, chemistry, chemistry. Very good. I'm my lot of colleagues in chemistry. Okay. Yes. And what was the first degree in? Mechanical engineering. Good. Thank you. Mechanical. Good. Good. Sir, you? Thank you. Okay, thank you. No, sir, just bando. Mechanical engineering, okay. Thank you. Good. In what? Physics? Okay, all right. Chemistry, right from bachelor masters. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, what is it? Good. That's excellent. Because that's the 
right, right kind of audience I'd love to have, okay? Because, thank you, thank you very much for that. Okay. This part discusses the amount of flyers produced over recent years and its properties, problems. When, when you say property is good, and as soon as you say problems, you say, hang on, what problems? Everything has got good and good in certain aspect and not good in other aspect. But the same thing, it may have not good in certain aspect and good in other aspects. Okay? So if someone says this is not good, then always to that it can be used in a, another another bit. Its properties, problems, and attempted research undertaken in recycling flyers in fields such as construction and agriculture. This is what we are going now. Construction is huge, and agriculture is also huge. If you go to the next slide, please. Now, flyage is small particles. So, for particularly physics, chemistry, and also mechanical engineering, so particle size is very important. Now, particle size, if you have smaller particles, for the same, for the same weight of the material, compared to particularly larger size, what is the difference between particle with smaller size and particle with larger size. Which area is most affected? Or surface area. Surface area. Yeah. That's why, say for example, as, as I said, if you have micro sized particle and if you can grind it to smaller size particle, they said that the smaller size particle for the same way, it, you can actually have a layer spread over all over Mel Melbourne cricket ground. I'm sure in a lot of cricket grounds here. But what does it mean? It means that if you're putting it in construction material, that surface area gives you more area of addition and bonding, provided it can do that bonding. But even otherwise, sometimes it does not give bonding, but it gets locked into the things and it can and it can transfer electrons or protons and things like that. So surface area is, is very good, okay, very important. The distribution, shape, and color of flyers and chemical properties of flyers, which makes flyers a potential user. Okay. Now, shape is particle can have spherical shapes, spherical shapes. Particle can have longitudinal shape, okay, like short fiber type of thing. There may be very microfiber, but it can be like that. And then when it comes to color, color of flyers is normally gray black or it can be brown if you have more copper is is brown okay copper oxide and if it's if you have not copper but it's gray black it's like the sh color of your shirt yes you yes yes stand up yeah. so, a lot of flyers can can be of this color all right so it's a very good example that you have you have put come up with it okay so but now what we have developed a technique that if you put this color fly ash in white cement or white plastics, because there is some residual carbon in it, then the color of the plastics become quite dark like this. Yeah, yes. And also it can do the same thing cement. But we developed a technique by which we can change the color of this uh, fly ash from gray black to near white. 95% whiteness of barium sulfate. And then, if you put it in a poly, polymer like polypropylene, it becomes almost like that. Okay? So, and please sit down. Thank you. See how everyone can contribute in this? So, whenever I look at the audience, a lot of answers come from there. Okay? Like, if you have a uh, copper, you can stand up. Your, your this hand, this color of the cloth is like brown, okay? So it, it is it's because of the copper. But again, if you need something, if you are putting flyers in some brown thing, that go for that kind of flyers, all right? Never say that it is not good. It is always good and appropriate in certain areas. That's all right. Like some, some of you like, are good in playing cricket, some of you are good in playing um, soccer, 
Oh, when he, you say Tamamu, I remember two names, Sachin Tendulkar and Sunil Gavaskar. Sunil Gavaskar used to be my friend when he used to go to Melbourne. I've never met Sachin Tendulkar, but he's such a good cricket player, isn't it? And also, Saurabh Ganguly is also quite good. I'll just sing a couple of lines of one of my songs about Sachin Tendulkar. Then we'll go to the next slide. Idhar dekha, udhar dekha, dekha andar aur bahar, dekha jak mein sab se achha cricketer Sachin Tendulkar. Okay, we'll go to the completion of the things at other times, all right? So, so we'll do that later and we'll put all of it together singing. Now, the next thing is, why is fly ash useful? Fly ash construction field because of its ozalonic property. What prosalonic property means, it actually picks up the water like cement or concrete, okay, and then it forms bonding. Now, I used to think, why is it called prosalonic? Because I went to the dictionaries and I didn't find any, any word like prosalonic. But then I said, hang on, there must be a reason. Then in one of the slides later, it will say that it was first realized in an elect, uh, Italian city of Posalio. Uzal, so that's where they invented it. And that's why it becomes the Posalonic properties. Okay, so it's a nice property because that way, how is cement, concrete, all this, we'll, we'll have some lectures later on. So you put cement and water and those things, they all combine bond things and they form such a such big strength. Okay? All right, so fly ash can do that. And so that way if you put fly ash, and you can get it very cheap, okay, so you can set up a brick or tile factory next to the fly ash, fly ash company, okay, so that you don't have to pay for transportation of the fly ash, all right. This says Portland cement production and helps to improve other properties, concrete, such as durability, strength, workability, chemical resistance, and we are going to the other thing. <coughs> now, durability is very important of concrete. What does durability mean? That it does not yeah, many longer times. And through what? Okay, that's why the chemistry yeah, can we speak it loudly? Thank you. Thank you. So this is the physics and chemistry mixed together. That's why I always want people to sit, sit and have food on the same table and talk chemistry and physics, all right? Strength. What is the strength of cement or concrete? It can be quite high depending on what type of cements or concrete. I have also worked with civil engineers and I have done some of the work which the first time we used some uh, concrete used in uh, France and then we put in carbon particles and things like that. Even ACE, uh, Advances in Civil Engineering Conference in IIT Kharagpur, I was asked to present a paper and my students actually did research with civil engineering and we presented that work. So maybe sometimes we can talk about it, but it is. Now, what is the disadvantage of uh, cement or concrete? What is its ductility, high or low? Low. So, what does it mean? How about the fracture toughness? Is it high or low? Okay, fracture toughness. What are the two units of fracture toughness? Or two names? One is fracture toughness, and the other is fracture. Fracture toughness is one. K is fracture toughness, and G. What does it mean? Fracture, it starts with E, E, N, E, no, 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 fracture, not modulus, we are talking about fracture, okay, K squared equals G times E, what is G and what is E? E is the modulus of elasticity and G is the fracture energy, okay, why I am saying that? 
people from chemistry and physics, they don't know about fracture toughness. They talk about fracture energy. And people in engineering, they talk about fracture toughness. But then they actually together. So there is the simplest formula is k squared equals g times e. Or k is square root of g times e. Okay? So that's where you have to realize that. Okay? And because I did my PhD in Monash University in fractured properties of polymer, and my supervisor, he came from UK when I went there. He was very tough. And, but I learned a lot from him. But at the same time, I also meant she was a he used to write papers and he used to sit in his office. He used to say, when do I have writing in, his, in my office? I said, look, I have written this paper before I submit it for, to the journal. No, I don't have time. I said, you, you have to sit down and have time. I'm waiting here for two years in your, sorry, two hours in your, in your office. Where have you been there? He said, I've, I've been boating and doing all these things. I said, you can do the boating tomorrow. But then eventually, I, all these papers, he would, but he was such a great man. Okay, so he was, and his PhD was in physics. So I learned a lot from there. He, he came from England, okay, and he used to work in ICI at that time. And then I told him, if I don't go through this, I said, if you don't go through these things, I'll submit it to the journals, but your name will not be there. Because I went from ISRO and I worked with Dr. Kalam and all these things, so I knew how to respect or how to give my. Okay, since I mentioned Dr. Kalam, it's a great, great name, isn't it? Okay, why I'm going slowly through this, because it is very important, okay, that strength is good, but also ductility or brittleness. Okay, now when we come to chemical resistance, and then, the, when there is chemistry, you have, you understand a bit more. And then now, use the flyers can reduce the heat of hydration. So hydration means when you have cement or concrete, when you put the things, it becomes very hot. And when it's cement, is it right? Yes. So that can sometimes have a negative effect. Because, but if you use flyers there, so that's why chemistry is taking over. Okay? So that is the advantage. And also, because of that advantage of using flyers and bricks, mortar, and road constructions are very attractive. All right. If you, you are most welcome to have copies of these CDs from uh, Professor Kamal Kikor or otherwise that book chapter which I mentioned. So these are from the book, that book chapter. And Sagat Cholake. He had taken his time and he wrote such a nice one. Initially, he put my name, Bandhubadha and Cholak, but then when he finished it, and no one accepted it. When Sagar was sending the final version, I said, Sagar, you put your name in the front. I said, I said, no, sir, put your name at first, I'll put me in the second because you have done all the hard work. So that's the way. So, and he did very good. So, all right. Can you go to the next slide? Okay. Have we learned something from this slide? Thank you. Now flyers, if you go to the agricultural field, can selectively improve the physical properties of soil and control its quality parameters such as fertility, microbes, enzymic activities, and nitrogen cycling. Now, when we had this conference in Kolkata, this, uh, as I mentioned, three, four years ago, there was a professor who came from Israel, and he, he told the audience, he said that, look, normally there is, there is always said that if you put flyers in water or environment, it has bad effect. But he said, no, but we have proved that it does not have that bad effect. So that was... ECUFA, name of the conference is ECUFA, I-C-U-F-A, International Conference of Flyage Applications, ECUFA. 
Okay, it was organized by uh, Pollution Control Board in Kolkata, and there was people from all over India and also international. So then it can improve the fertility, microbes, enzyme activity, and nitrogen cycling. So these are all of a sudden it is going to the environmental effect also. Okay, flies can can do that. Flyers can also help to remove the trace elements like zinc, copper, cadmium, chromium, lead or manganese from the aqua system. So if it can remove the lead, that's a fantastic thing. All right? Or even zinc. Zinc and lead there sometimes. So this is what the advantages of fly has. Now, so please keep these things in mind. So depending on which area you are working in, all right? Finally, flies replaces lime used as soil ameliorant and reduces carbon dioxide emission and therefore can lessen global warming. This is, this is fantastic if you put fly ash in soil and things. As it is when coal is burning, it gives a lot of carbon dioxide, but fly ash can take up those carbon dioxide and it can reduce the carbon dioxide. You have seen this? You know who this gentleman is? How can we forget? But why I'm showing that? I had worked in his team when I used to work in Israel many years ago. And then in 2004, so when he was the president of India, I found on the website that he was organizing a nanotechnology conference in the presidential palace. So I wrote a letter with permission from my head of school and dean. I said, sir, I'm UNSW and I work in, I read your article, your introduction to that conference. Can, can you please give some funding so that Australia and your, my university and your uh, uh, presidential, we can do some research. And within, within two weeks, I received a letter from uh, the presidential palace and then I went there. And again, that was his nanotechnology program, not the flyers. But now DST India initiated very good flyers program. And as I mentioned, flyers is now a commercial commodity. That's good, particularly for the flyers production in the coal power stations. So they can get some money if they sell the flyers. And I also mentioned to Professor Kamal Kikor that the secretary of that DST project, uh, Vimal Kumar, he has set up his own company. And I've given Professor Kamal Kikor's name and your ITK. So these things can have an effect. Can you go to the next one? OK. This is a small thing. We come back to that later on. We developed an Australian technology method for modifying the color of fly ash from gray black to near white with 95% whiteness of barium sulfate. So what it basically did is that we remove the LOI. What people, what is LOI? Thank you, thank you. Because often when I say loss, what is LOI, there are other, 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 there another aspect, people who study polymer, they say loss of LOI is limited oxygen, limited oxygen index. So in this case, it's not limited oxygen index, okay? LOI means <laughs> loss of ignition, okay. The introduction to coal combustion products. Now, it is just an introductory part, but it is worth knowing when you burn the coal, what are the products that are coming out, okay? At present, very large amount of fossil fuels are used in electricity generation throughout the world. And like, you know, the, and then as population and industries are increasing, need of electricity is also increasing. Thus, developed nations and developed countries are increasing their electricity generation used mostly by use pulverized coal. So people keep on criticizing this carbon dioxide emission and things. But they keep on improving the coal industry, 
Okay? So they, so they say one thing, but they do the other thing. And that's what we scientists don't like it. Politicians say one thing, and they do other thing. But we scientists, or engineers, we have to look for the good things by us. We have to stand up and we have to say politely, but firmly, no, please. What you are doing is not correct. It's not correct for your, your own country also. All right? And this is what once Professor Siena Rao, he, he went there and in, he went to Sydney and then I invited him to my university once and then there was a newspaper, uh, Indian Link, and I invited them to send a, someone to oh, have a chat with Dr. Siena Rao. So they talk, and Dr. Siena Rao said, he said, it is America who, are, who is burning most of the coal and generating all the carbon dioxide. Why should we, India, take action in there? Now, coming from Dr. I mean, he didn't tell it to, to all the people when we were having a cup of tea and I think that's what he told, told us. So I thought, oh, well, there's a lot of truth in there. But the way the world is, things go on. But we have to keep our countries as good as we can. But again, going back there, if burning coal is generating carbon dioxide, but if you can reuse the fly ash, it can take up that carbon dioxide, it can reduce that. But America also has been a leader in that area. All right? So, but they, they don't say that. But this is what comes out from here. So, burn coal, generate carbon dioxide, but you use fly ash, it will catch up those carbon dioxide. So, as a materials engineer, or as engineer, civil engineer, we can all do that. Okay, can we go to the next one? Are there any questions so far? Or can I go to the, the slides? Are we, yes? Well, the significant increase has been in the Sharpie fracture toughness. Yes, the strength is something, it is, it is a bit Okay, going back to that, there are civil engineers and chemistry. Strength is strength, but if there are some voids or something like that, that is a thing called stress concentration. So if you have circular voids, uh, circular voids, okay, and then if you up like that, the strength, stress goes up by three times, and it fails much earlier. So the strength does not mean much. Strength, to me, strength is the worst strength, but if you know how much void is there in anything, then what it what it means, all right? So to me, strength is good. so strength can you can see it can goes down or it can go up a little bit, but using this in polypropylene, you know, sip it, sip it, no sip it. Okay. So I had very good interaction with sip it. In fact, uh, the deputy DG of sip it and four scientists went my university in my department for two weeks and I organized a training for them, okay? And they are also very good in polymer. So one of those separate scientists, Dr. Upindra Singh, Upinder Singh, so he was there and he showed interest because we had set up four different uh, experimental set up for four different people. And Dr. Upinder Singh, he said, sir, I would like to work with this near white and fly ash in polypropylene. So I said, all right, okay. So we measured the tensile strength, but sometimes it goes down and up. But the impact, chart impact, what is an impact test? You put a defect and you hit it hard. All of a sudden. And that it showed, I'll show in later slides also, and also even, even not not near white and flies, even normal flies, the impact strength keep on goes up, going up. And also to answer your question, one of my PhD student, Agma Zeni, he went from Indonesia. So he did his PhD and there he actually showed that the tensile strength is going up. But whenever you're looking at going up, 
there are lots of models and there are different models have different things so I'll, I'll have one lecture I'm sure as soon as I go to that lecture all of you will fall asleep you are so boring about modeling and things but to us to engineers to civil engineers mechanics every time they, use it, they say what is a model can you show an equation so we showed that there are seven or eight models for strength as a function of this you know, putting the amount of the material second phase but our composites went up and it fixed one of those models not seven of the models so to answer your question strength there are models and when strength goes up people don't think there is defect but that's where fraction mechanics so I would recommend all of you all of you to do a fracture mechanics course alright all doesn't matter how top you are and things like that or how early career do a fracture mechanics course using both fracture mechanics I'll actually during tutorial I'll give, give some ideas tutorial session I'll give because fracture mechanics is something which makes it very useful may I say very politely this you know this uh, new Boeing 787 plane which comes up and flies a long way what is the advantage of that plane is very lightweight structure but also it has other properties but would you know how what happened in 2002 I had a master student who went from Thailand and then I before being in the university I was a uh, senior research scientist in Australian Defense Science and Technology Organization and there we did a lot of fracture mechanics work okay so now what happens I combined I asked one of my former colleagues in the defense I said his name is Peter Birchill and of course he had my must add I when I was appointed there I was appointed in the organic chemistry division and how many people were there there were a hundred employees in that division 99 of them were chemists and I was the only one who was not a non-chemist but I learned a lot from them and I then I realized how how good chemistry is okay all right but what what we did, did from there I combined him and I had my student who came from a master student who went from uh, Thailand one was super cool if you go on his website you can still find him P A N U W A T super cool and then we used composites using glass fabrics we use different types of fabrics but we kept the volume fraction of the glass about the same between 65 to 70, 67 percent and then when it worked out the fracture toughness and the strength of the area we could show that one particular type of the fabric can give the best properties and then we purchased it, it was not purchased, we published it in the international journal within two weeks I received an email from Boeing headquarters in California they said we have gone through your paper it's wonderful would you give us permission to go ahead with, with, with your work then I sent that paper to the old PVC vice chancellor that email and on the paper who later became a vice chancellor he immediately said yes Bando give me permission he was, he was a mechanical engineer so you could see that and then that model actually is used in, in those 787 there so thereby for the same type of volume fraction of the fiber but if you go a particular type of orientation you get the highest property and that way if you get the highest property that means you can use much lesser material the weight is becomes much less okay so that's what composites are for if you are going to use something like that why trucks use composites because it is much less weight you can put more petrol there or put other materials so it takes much less energy for transfer all right does it answer your question Do you want to have a break or can I continue this slide?
Okay. Yes, let's go through that because take, take it easy. Okay. After burning of pulverized coal, immense amount of inorganic residue, also known as CCP or coal combustion products or coal combustion waste. Some people, if you are a, if you are a engineer, you will say coal combustion product. If you are a politician, they might say it's a waste material. Why are you saying products? Okay, but we are engineers and scientists. We said no, it's, it's not a waste material. Any material is a material. All right. What is a material? It has a chemical bond through which it, it can be used. All right. And the types of CCP or CTW, there are four main types of coal combustion products. One is fly ash, one is bottom ash, one is boiler slime, and the other one is flue gas desulfurization. So this is given in these publications. So I have included those publications also. And if you either go to that book chapter, the chapter one of that first thing, you can find all these things. So it is always worthwhile in our university we are always recommended, our university system research integrity always says that when you are making a presentation or things like that and you are taking, please always acknowledge them. Okay? Because, because that way, otherwise, a lot of people, if you don't give that, people, people will think it's my, no, it's not. We cannot do everything, but that's what science and engineering is. All right? Okay, fly ash is the major part of coal combustion product. It is almost spherical in shape and collected from the gas by using an electrostatic precipitator, bag houses, or mechanical collection devices such as cyclone. So, electrostatic precipitators, there are electrical engineers here, you know more about that. But you can do it electrically, you can do it mechanically, and any, any way you can. And again, those couple of applications are given there. Now, the amount of fly ash in CCP, CCP is a coal combustion product, thank you, 55 to 65 percent and depends on quality and composition of coal and also the method of utility. So, that means that coal combustion products which you have, so 55 to 65 percent of that is fly ash. This is a very, very, it can be a very, very good source of new material, okay? Now, even if you go back some 10, 12 years ago, fly ash produced in USA was 55 percent of the total CCP produced there, whereas in Europe it was 66 percent. So, in one way, America could say, look, Europe, you have more fly ash. But then Europe will tell uh, America, look, America, we have more flies so that we can make, make use of flies much better. All right? So everything is good, and if you look at the other, it can have a better aspect. All right? So this is table one. So, and it shows about, it goes up to 2008, and things, information keep on changing. So flyers, bottom ash, border slag, and so, if you look at fly ash, not worry about the bottom. So, USA and Europe, these are the tables. So, USA used to be between 76 to 72.5 at that time, and Europe becomes like that. So, again, these are some tables which are given there, and this is American Coal Association. Is it possible to click on? That can you click on that? Or the last one, the last line at the bottom, H A T T P. Because that's why I use the PDF PDF file. If you if you click, no no no, go back to the last slide, previous slide. Yeah, can you click on this one? Click. Is it possible to click? No? Okay. That's why I use the PDF version. 
because the PDF version, if you click, it automatically automatically goes, and that's why I bring both PDF and the PowerPoint. Okay, but here, if we had the PDF, the PDF, the computer cannot do that. Okay, so the computer industry has to look for doing something better. Anyone working in computer industry? No. That's good. You can join a computer industry, and you can say that this is what you can do. Then the computer industry will become much more popular, because we have to go for the best things. If you go for the PDF, then I click it, and immediately all the things come up. Maybe in the future we'll do that. I'm the most lousy person in computer, my knowledge in computer, but I try to get the best out of it. So if you put the PDF. Okay, so this table shows coal combustion products. It's European coal combustion products and American coal combustion products. So sometimes when they do that, these are for reference only. All right, because sometimes things change, and there is a lot of management. We are Europeans. We are Americans. We say no, we are Indians, but we do things that comes true. All right. Go to the next page, please. Do you want to have a five minutes break, or shall I com 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 complete these sl slides? How many more slides are there? Eleven. Go on. Or speak loudly. I am comfortable anyway. I don't mind. I came. I came. I came from all the way Sydney, <coughs> and I'll, I'll tell you that I we took <coughs> five flights. It came to Bangkok. Four hours waiting there, then came to Delhi at 2:20 a.m. in the morning, and then from there to get the visa, we thought it would be done in half an hour. And we had a flight in the 5:35 from Delhi to Lucknow, but we found that it took about three hours' time to get the visa, and then we had to rush. Okay, and I told one of the bosses, I said, "Look, we have a connecting flight. I have to go to Delhi, but but we cannot help that if you have to stand in the line." I said, "Okay, thank you very much. You are great." But then the guy who actually put brought us there, and my wife, she says. You know, wives are always stronger than husbands. Okay, so she said, "Mother, I said, okay." So by the time we finished it, and then we went, went to the other one, the jet airways. There are only 10-15 minutes time left for boarding. Okay. So that's what. And then the next morning when he came from there, he came. So we had sleepless nights and things like that. So I don't worry about time. All right, because your your presence. Your company is much more important to me. It relaxes my stress. Okay, bottom edge is another thing, heavier, and we'll not spend much time on this because we are not going to use it. And coarser than fly ash, and this is non-combustible part of the coal. And amount of fly ash and bottom edge present in CCPs depends on the type of coal fired boiler furnace used, but. In some, in the future, bottom ash also if it may be heavier than, but keep it, keep your eyes open, because it's also a combination of ceramics and the things. Okay, so this can be another treasure. All right. Okay. In general, there are three types of coal-fired boiler furnaces in use, where you have dry bottom boiler furnace, wet bottom boiler furnace, cyclone furnace. Again, this reference has given here. I'm not an Expert on on these, okay? But these are the things which we found out from the literature, and there are. If you go to any well, other boiler furnace, there must be boiler furnaces in Kanpur, Lucknow, and everywhere. Sometimes you can make a trip there, and you can learn which one they have. The most mostly used furnace is dry bottom variety, which produces 80 percent fly ash and 20 percent bottom ash. And then bottom ash is collected at the bottom section of the furnace, 
which is filled with water. And bottom collected ash is gray brown, gray to brown in color, and granular or porous in shapes. So, what is says that fly ash, it can be <coughs> solid particles and it can also be porous particles. So, you can absorb water, likewise, bottom ash also can do it. So, from that point of view, if you use fly ash in cement and concrete, and if it has porosity, it can absorb water also. So, it is, it is good from that point of view, because that is what cement does. All right? Mm -hmm. Okay. When we, when we have the break, you come and say five minutes on that. All right? Okay, 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 that will be good. All right, thank you. You are from KIIT. See, Bhubaneshwar? That's a good place. That's where Netaji Shubhas Chandra was born many years ago. Okay. But that is what is important, all right? So, in the paper industry and things like that, if you can do that. So that is why, always keep eyes open and, and think, thanks for that. Because I think about using in the materials industry, civil and other things, yes. And when you use it in the paper, that is why sometimes it, the colors can be changed also, depending on what type of thing you will use, right? Okay, next one. <coughs> Boiler slag. Usually, this type of CCB is observed when slack type <coughs> cyclone boiler is. <coughs> I need a cup of tea. In these boilers, the ash is in the molten stage and tapped off. So, that is, so if this ash is in the molten stage, so what is the temperature of the boiler? Very high. Because what is the melting point of aluminum oxide? Who can make a guess? Give a rough idea. Yes, something like that. So, if the fly ash is molten there, that means the temperature is yes. And also sometimes it may be may not be all of it is molten, but the one which at the lowest melting point that becomes molten, and that actually is like a when you cook food. So you have molten things, which may solid thing dal do, so soup ban jayega. Okay. So, it might become a fly ash soup, but it is partly liquid and partly solid, all right? This liquid is collected into the ash hopper, and as soon as the molten slag comes in contact with the quenching water present in the hopper, it fractures instantly, <coughs> crystallizes and forms pellets. So, again, that is why, the, if you have the things, large size, it fractures. And why does it fracture? Fracture always happens under tensile stress or shear stress. So, when it cools down or something like that, there is, yes, contraction and there are stresses because of that. And because, what is the fracture energy of ceramics or fracture toughness of ceramics, typical? Okay, let us go back to what is the fracture toughness of aluminum alloy? It can be between 20 to 30 MPS per root of meter. Whereas, fracture toughness of ceramics is often less than 1, <coughs> one MPS per root of meter. It can be half MPS, something like that. Okay? So that, that gives the difference between the so brittle materials of fracture toughness. All right? And the unit of fracture toughness is the MPS per root of meter, and the unit of fracture energy is joules per meter square energy per meter square, okay. But that shows that if you have if you have aluminum or steel will have fracture toughness about 40, 45 MPS square root of meter, all right. But again depend on what type of steel. If it is ferritic steel you have, okay, but if you have martensitic steel, martensitic steel has much lower fracture toughness as a bit made. Why? Because it has a lot of carbon in there, all right. So similarly fly ash depending on what type of distributions you have. Okay. Now, then the liquid is collected into the ash hopper. As soon as the molten slug becomes contact, 
it fractures immediately instantly, crystallizes and forms pellets. This the color of this boiler slag is black and also it is coarse, hard, angular and glassy. Glassy means it is brittle easily. Now, this is black glass, but it is it forms in all these things. So, this is also called black beauty. Presence of boiler flag in CCP is very low and it varies from 1.5 to 3 percent. So, if you go back to the table 1, it can happen that and it also gives all those things. Okay. Flue gas desulfurization and other things. This is the fourth type of CCP, the combustion product, coal combustion product and further can be divided into FGD material, waste scrubbers and FGD materials. FGD means fuel gas desulfurization. Again, the public publication is given there. Value of FGD in table 1 represents summation values of these two types. So, again, if you go back to the FG1, we can see that 20 to 25 percent of the CCB constituents FDG, FGD are the byproducts. So, we can go to the next one. Now, fly ash is often people who do not like coal industries, they say fly ash is a big environmental problem in the current world. Now, one way of disposal of fly ash is dumping, however dumping not only requires instead of millions of dollars, you can say crores of rupees. It is also very much hazardous to the environment and takes lots of precious land. Now, a research is going on like that, but these are some of the things. If you come back to India, in 2001, which is about 17 years ago, annual production of fly ash was about 45 million tons and land required to dump that much was used about 14,000 hectares. So, if I just dump it in the land. Now, then it was predicted that the amount of fly ash produced in 2010 would be about so that is how productions and the predictions are there and then they will say to dump this amount of fly ash will require much more land. So, that means people are getting worried about what to do with this fly ash and if we put it dump in, in the land and then how can we still produce rice and other things and all those things. So, that gives the engineers, they thought that hang on, fly ash is a strong combination of ceramics, why do we have to dump it? We can use it, recycle, recycle it in, in proper way. And when you put fly ash inside even plastics and other things, the fly ash is inside, the fly ash is not outside. If you make composites out of it, it is a filler, it will be inside. Okay. So, that is what the whole thoughts and I think maybe that is how this, this work shows that utilization of fly ash can encourage make much better products, it enhances the industries and at the same time it saves a lot of the land there. Because when you put it there a lot of the land then people may not like to go there. As a follow up action in order to prevent flyers from getting air bone, dumping sites must be kept wet by sprinkling over it, water over it and this technique is added in USA. So, what is said that when flies is coming out, they do not like it to be just flying, that is why the name is flyers, fly in the air. So, rather than they said you cool it down, so that it does not fly. In countries where this method is not adapted, fly ash contaminates into water and soil and it is claimed that they reduce soil fertility. When fly ash get into natural drainage system, it results in silation and clogging of the system. It also reduces the pH balance and the portability of water. So, these are different people, different researchers, they produce the thing. So, this is what I present. It is not none of my work. Because my work is in utilizing fly ash. Okay. So, but it is good to know if some of these results are there, then you can use those knowledge and you can select the applications. And as I say, if you put fly ash as a as something inside a material, 
then the fly is not coming in contact with the soil or any other thing. There is no direct contact, no direct contact with it. Okay? That's, that's what, say for example, if you are, when I came here two days ago, yesterday morning when I was, yesterday morning when I, I woke up and went to have our breakfast in the restaurant, it was a very nice restaurant, thanks to Professor Kamalkar. For putting us in there. And I could see there's some a sh sh shade of, I didn't understand whether it is a uh, dust or whether it is a pani. What is it called in Hindi? So I, mean, I thought those are the things. But then my wife, she said, no, there must be, they must be burning some trees there and they are there. there. But whatever it is, if these particles come into atmosphere, sometimes it, it causes concern. And if it's not <coughs> disruptive, then people can also, the same thing happens about flyers. Okay? Okay, let's go to the Flyers interferes with the process of photosynthesis of aquatic plants and thus can disrupt, disrupt the food. And these are the other accidents besides flies can corrode exposed metallic structure in its vicinity. Also, they are dispersed flies particles, cause a lot of health problems, such as irritation to eyes and skins, and they can clog the nose, throat, and so. But as soon as they do that, they, there are medical institutions and the people who generate things, so they put sprays and things like that. So, those things are there. So, this is the website for that. This is actually an Indian website. And let's go to the next one. I think we have how many more left? Four. Including this. Okay. Because many countries are facing di different flyers related problems. and They are trying to minimize the amount of CCP waste or to recycle CCPP. And flyers constitute the major problem of CCP because Countries are concentrating on the use of fly ash. To tackle this situation in different countries, organizations have become highly active, like American Coal Association, as Development Association Australia, European Coal Development Association. And there is a huge amount of research I have seen in India. So I did not know that India, Indian scientists are so much useful. And lots lots of work, including using fly ash in dielectric applications. I have recently a student doing research in using fly ash in dielectric application and he finds so many and those things will be coming up in future. One. <coughs> Next one. Now fly ash is a collection of oxide. Collection of oxides has also some attractive important properties which can be highly useful in engineering. And so this is the positive aspect of because Ceramics have very high strength, very high stiffness, very high temperature molding, and also if we can make them smaller, they are very good bonding with cement, plastics, and things like that. They, they can compose this. For example, flyers poses a pozzolanic structure in which material shows cementous properties on cal combination with calcium hydroxide. So, flyers can be used in Portland cement below 30% by weight, that's reducing the use of conventional cement and which saves the soil too. So you now you are saving the soil also. As fly ash can be very much beneficial in many ways, this gyan this presents the properties of fly ash and is recycling in details. So quickly going through that, fly ash, so what we have said so far, summarizing it, fly ash is a fine glassy powder which comes from non combustible product of coal. When coal is charged in power plant, it gets grounded to the fineness of powder. Subsequently, the grounded fine coal powder is blown into the boiler surface. And in which, in this part, combustion is done, that means carbon in the coal burns and generates energy. After this combustion, the non-combustible parts of coal get separated and the 
non-combustible part is nothing but the fly ash. And there is a reference given there. And these references, as I said, I, I have given the uh, PDF version to Professor Kamal Kekar. And if you go there and then if you can click them, they, you automatically go into the references, all right? So earlier fly ash was released in atmosphere through flue glass stack. They're not only fly, fly ash. So when I used to be in Jamsetpur and the, there is a steel plant. Remember, do you know, remember the name of the steel plant? Jamsetpur? Tata steel. Tata steel. Yes. And in the morning when I was just in the roof, we had lots of this powders flowing in the, in the thing. So there is a lot of burning and things like that. Steel is all, steel also needs a lot of carbon burning. Okay. So those things flow in the air and I could smell them. So this is, with the coal burning power, there is more of such fly ash actually coming in the thing. So it is worth not letting that happen. And so nowadays, okay, so instruments like electrostatic precipitators, baghauser mechanical collectors are used to collect fly ash prior to its exit, exit to atmosphere. So this is, one has to actually realize whether you are a physicist, chemist, mechanical engineer, civil engineer, chemical engineer, otherwise, when you go to the coal production comp burning company, they will ask you how you can help, because different coal burning companies may have different things. So please, this first lecture is an introduction. See, for every type of bias problem, there is a solution. And sometimes, different people can have to team together. So a chemist can he may need to work with a chemical engineer, mechanical engineer may need to work with this civil engineer, material scientist. Material scientist can be a part of many of the things, okay? And if you have any difficulty, Professor Kamal Kekor and his team is there. So this is the end of the first slide. So did we learn anything from there? So any questions so far? Yes, yes. Yes, select different type of fly ash. Yes, and if you can you can do it. Now, can it? Yes, 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 yes. But at the same time, it's better that the the filters do not have. They don't prefer to have layers of zinc in the filter. So keep that in mind. <coughs> so Yes, you have done your PhD on that. Thank you very much. Well, soil has different compositions. So, some flyers can help soils because we live in, I live in Sydney. And there, there are some soils which does not produce any grain. It's called sand soil. So you have the, it rains, but the good thing is there is no flood. So where we live there, when it rains heavily, everything goes into the ground. It's, a, it's full of, but there are some soils where the water comes and actually interacts with the, the material. So maybe where we have this sand soil, Maybe in that part of area, some fly ash can prevent the water going down. But if the water goes down there, then for big trees, it's an advantage. And also, there's a lot of water, water goes down to one kilometer, and people can 
use them as water by using electricity power. So, but to answer your question, yes, there are areas where these flyers can actually make the water not going to the down, but it, it can be used for agricultural application. That means the water will stay. If we have normal then the water needs to stay at least one meter or two meter below, it shouldn't go down. So yes, you can do that. So that is, so when you say, thank you for that, and thanks for coming, and when you say fly ash, like even in cement, you don't use 100% fly ash, like, and even other ones you use 30 to 40%, but any amount of fly ash you can use, but that's why these researches are very, very important, because your research is very good from that point of view, because then if you use 60% or 60% fly ash and 40% organic things, then the trees will be able to tolerate that, but, but they will have all their food and things like that also. So please publish your work and let Professor Kamal Khan know also, okay? And that's what I like about when you said that you did your PhD at, I've never come to KIIT, but I have reviewed PhD thesis from KIIT, that's how I remember the name. But it, it's a good question and a good answer because different types of there are soil, soil. If it rains or if water, water goes down very much. So the water, even the trees will not survive because it will be dry. But if you can put a mixture of fly ash with the mixture of other things. Sorry. I think so. The professor who came from Israel in that ECUFA, please go to that website, ECUFA, uh, ECUFA, I C U F A, International Conference on Fly Ash uh, Applications. And it was held in Kolkata Pollution Control Board, I think 2013 or 14, okay? But it was, I happened to be the, just the supporting or initiating organization. But they did all the work. But please go through that. There is a professor who came from Israel, and he actually proved that the people think that fly ash uh, damages this. What? He said, no, fly ash doesn't damage it. But at the same time, there are different types of fly ash in soils. So you have to keep that in mind. Please go there. Yes, yes, yes. I receive, <coughs> I think I have seen a PhD thesis in that your center. Okay? But this is why it's very important that we talk with each other and we can. You have my email and Professor Kaur has my email, so you can contact me and we can go to Professor Kaur. Okay? But now when I'm here, my email is not working because every time I put a new this uh, password. So, so when I go back, it will be better. Uh, thanks for that. I've been in Orissa many times, but I have not directly been to KIIT. Uh, it will be my honor if, you, if I come there. Yes, sir. Thank you.